Welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. Come, join me as we explore the multifaceted worlds of nursing. Hi there students! My name is Chris Elmer Ducanes and I am a research instructor. For today's topic, we have the concept of population, sample, and sampling scheme. First off, let's define population. It is the entire set of individuals or objects having some common characteristics. For instance, if you are doing your study on Filipino nurses with doctoral degrees, the population could be defined as all Filipino citizens who are registered nurses and who have acquired a PhD, Doctor of Science in Nursing, Doctor of Education, or other doctoral level degree. Populations might also consist of objects, such as all evaluation sheets of nursing students in a particular college all hospital records on file in a particular hospital, all College of Nursing in the Philippines who accept second degree courses. There are two types of population. First is accessible population. It refers to the entire set of cases that conform to the designated criteria set by the researcher and that are available to the researcher as a pool of subjects for a study. For example, you are doing a study on a deaf-mute preschool children. Your accessible population would be all deaf-mute children ages 2 to 4 in Iloilo City. Another one is a target population. It is the aggregate of cases about which the researcher would like to make generalizations. A target population for the above study might consist of all deaf-mute children in West Visayas. You want to generalize the result of your study for them. The researchers usually sample from an accessible population and hope to generalize to a target population. Now let's have the eligibility criteria. It refers to the standards used by researcher by which participants are selected for inclusion in the study. It can be age, gender, family constellation, family relationships, educational qualification. The researcher would then specify the characteristics in each criterion measure and select participants based on these characteristics. Now let's have strata. It may be thought of as subpopulation. And it is used in the sample selection process to enhance the representativeness of the sample. For instance, strata of students consisting of year level, such as level 1, level 2, level 3, and level 4. Now let's proceed to samples and sampling. Sample consists of a fraction of the population selected for the study. On the other hand, sampling means the process of selecting a portion of a population to represent the entire population. And representative sample are the key characteristics closely approximate those of the population. Sampling scheme or process can be grouped into two categories. First, we have your probability sampling. It involves random selection. The other one is non-probability sampling. Elements are selected by non-random methods. So here are the reasons why researchers work with samples than populations. First is it is more economical and efficient to do so. Next is the typical researcher has neither time 
or the resources to study all the members of the population. And lastly, it is usually unnecessary to gather data on some phenomenon from an entire population. Now let's discuss sampling bias. Sampling bias refers to the systematic overrepresentativeness or underrepresentativeness of some segment of the population in terms of a characteristic relevant to the research question that produces a distortion in the result of a study. Suppose you want to investigate patients' responsiveness to touch by nurses and you decide to use a sample of 50 patients meeting the eligibility criteria who enter the emergency room. You decide to omit the lady who looks hostile. A man who is angry is also excluded. Doing this can lead to bias because response to touch may be affected by feelings towards nurses or their psychological state. Now let's have the non-probability sampling. So elements are selected by non-random methods. And there are three primary methods. We have convenience sampling, quota sampling, and purposive sampling. First, we have convenience sampling. It entails the use of the most available people or objects as subjects in a study. This is sometimes called accidental sampling. A faculty member who distributes questionnaires for her study to her own class is using convenience sampling. Another type of convenience sampling is known as snowball sampling or network sampling. Here, early sample members are asked to identify and refer other people who meet the eligibility criteria. This method is most likely to be used where the research population consists of people with specific traits difficult to identify. The second one is quota sampling. This is one in which the researcher identifies strata of the population and determines the proportions of elements needed from the various segments of the population. Let us consider, for example, the study or attitudes of nursing students working with infectious patients. The accessible population has an undergraduate enrollment of 1,000 students, two-thirds of which are women and one-third are men. A sample size of 200 students is desired. The sample should consist of two-third women or 132 students and one-third men or 68 men. If the researcher desires to get the opinion of the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, then the percentage of each level in the total enrollment should be determined. The sampling follow this percentage. Lastly, we have the purposive sampling. It is also known as judgmental sampling and it is based on the belief that a researcher's knowledge about the population can be used to handpick the cases to be included in the sample. Now let's proceed to probability sampling. It is the hallmark of probability sampling that the random selection of elements from the population should be demonstrated. The four most commonly used probability sampling methods are simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, cluster sampling, and systematic sampling. First, first we have simple random sampling. It refers to the use of procedures that give equal opportunity for every member of the population to be chosen in the sample. The researcher, first of all, establishes a sampling frame, which is the actual list of elements from which the sample will be chosen. The elements must be numbered consecutively. 
Here are the methods of picking out the desired sample. First, we have the fishbowl lottery draw. Each element or number is placed in a container. The researcher draws the number desired and matches the number to the corresponding name. Another one is the table of random numbers. This table consists of list of numbers arranged in a random fashion. The instructions are easy to apply in particular situation. Next, we have the flip coin. It is to determine where the members in the control and study groups of an experimental study. And lastly, we have computer. Available are programs that provide random numbers. Let us take for instance that your study involves testing a method of reducing stress. Your desired sample for this study is 30 students. Let us assure that your sampling frame consists of 50 students. You will proceed by assigning a number for each of the 50 students and then apply any of the methods of picking out the actual sampling. Next is stratified random sampling. It is a form of simple random sampling in which the population is first divided into two or more strata or subgroups. Appropriate number of element can be selected from each strata using the simple random method. Another one is cluster sampling. In this sampling design, there is a successive random sampling of units. The first unit to be sampled from a big population is large groupings or clusters, such as provinces, cities, district, barangays, and families. The final selection from which a cluster may be performed by simple or stratified random sampling. A type of sampling method in which we split a population into cluster, then randomly select some of the cluster and include all members from those clusters in the sample. Lastly, we have systematic sampling. This involves the selection of every nth case from some list or group, such as every third person in an enrollment list. I believe that ends our lecture on the concept of population, sample, and sampling scheme. If you think this lecture video helped you, you may hit the like and share button and spread good vibes. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more informative and exciting lecture videos. This has been Crazy Nurse RN. Have a nice day and see you in my next lecture videos. Goodbye!